vibe, ay, 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 ride with the vibe, ay. Ride with the vibe, my delegation the realist, the acts of the apostle. Ride with the vibe, delegation the realist, the acts of the apostles, I know the prophet. Mount Zion, God body building up like Lufa Rigno. Uh, the gospel that we pump and we work out everywhere we go. Uh, Stop, I say that Levi. Watch I go on the bench, K pops of the Northern Kingdom, tell Judah to get up with me. We on the road, cruising so smooth, I just let the top down. Do everything in order, we solid this from the top down. Uh, stand it up. For the most high against the evil doers Wicked niggas out here scoffing But somebody had to do it They just talking while we proving The gospel that we stand on We set for the defense against who handling the word wrong No, this ain't no vacation But feel the sunshine vibes It's all work and no play We throwing, look how time flies So fly, most high fresh Purple with the gold Let me ask you a question, brother. You from Jackson, right? Okay, I live there too. Right, most of us from Jackson, Mississippi, but we coming out here to support our brothers in Baton Rouge, right? So, when you look at Jackson and you look at Baton Rouge, are they the same? You say you don't notice no different, right? It's the exact same, right? The, 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 uh, the ghetto look the same. Everything look the same by our communities, right? No difference whatsoever. You still feel like you at home, right? But if guess what? You go to Chicago, you're gonna see the same thing. You go to New Orleans, you're gonna see the same thing. Everywhere you go, you see the same thing regarding our people. We oppress. Now, let me ask you a question. Our people are here for a Mardi Gras festival, right? Mardi Gras, what's the origin? You'll know, all right? So you know we the Israelites, right? According to the Bible, so-called black people, you come from the tribe of Judah. Some of you maybe come from the tribe of Benjamin. Some of you come from the tribe of Gad. But we make up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now watch this. Give me second Maccabees 6. I just want to show you something. You come back off after this. I just want to show you something regarding what our people out here doing today. They don't realize they're in the midst of idolatry. Our brothers and sisters, sisters, come over here and hear this word of God. We got this good word of God for you. This ain't the white man uh, doctrine we teach. We teaching the truth. Right, watch this. The book of second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself all to be a Jew. So during the time we was under the Greeks, you heard of a man named Alexander the Greek? You heard that before, right? Alexander the Greek conquered our people and oppressed them. And out of his out of his four generals, he had a man named Antiochus, right? So Antiochus put in the law where we couldn't call ourselves Jews. We had to call ourselves whatever they wanted us to call ourselves, which was Greeks, right? So now he said we weren't able to keep our Sabbath, right? Nor was we able to call ourselves Jews and keep the feast days, right? Now watch what they did to us. Verse 7, and in the day of the king's birthday, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go and profess to Bacchus carrying iron. Hear that? Bacchus. You know what Bacchus is? That's the Greek god of wine. That's where Mardi Gras come from. Down in, in, the, in the Caribbean islands, they call it Bacchanawa. What happened in the Mardi Gras festival? They throw beads, women get half naked, people drink a lot of liquor, people drink a lot of wine, people eat a lot of pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Full of abomination. The Bible said that's what they was forcing us to do during the time of the Greeks. Bacchus and Mardi Gras is the exact same. That's why in New Orleans, they got the uh, Bacca Gator. Right? You ever seen that float? It's like an alligator with a whole bunch of people on the back of it drinking wine. That's where they got that from, Bacchus. Back, see, the thing about history, it always repeats itself. It ain't nothing new under the sun. Our people were celebrating that back then. They celebrating it now. Now, how does God feel about us celebrating something that our oppressors instituted? He, it displeased God, right? God don't want us following the ways of our oppressors. God always told us, come out from among them. Give me that real quick. You know what I want? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Watch what God said, because many of you black people out here, you don't know the truth about who you are. You've never been taught the truth about who you are. You God chose the people. God don't want our daughters twerking. That's your baby girl right there. You don't want to see her online one day twerking, showing her body. She ain't going to do it either, right? Because her daddy going to make sure she don't do it, right? That's your grandbaby. You're going to make sure that too then. Grandbaby too. You understand? 
But guess what? A lot of our sisters fall victim to the ways of the world. A lot of our sisters out here are single mothers. You think it's you think it's God's will for a woman to be a single mother? But how many of that plague our community though? I guarantee you, 85% of our sisters out here are single mothers. That's a problem in the black community. That's right. Where the white single mothers at? Where the Chinese single mothers at? Where the Arab single mothers at? Where the African single mothers at? Where the independent Chinese woman? <laughs> Where the strong independent white woman? Ain't none. They don't exist because they got their man at their house. You see what I'm saying? But in our communities, they want our women to not have no man. So she can destroy her sons and daughters by herself because a woman ain't supposed to raise children by herself. It's not biblical. Right? Come on. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 16. 17. 17. Watch this. Wherefore, come out from amongst them, and be ye separate. You know what God said? God said, come out from among them. Among who? Unbelievers. The white man don't believe the Bible. The white man does not believe the Bible. Because if he believed the Bible, why would he change the image of Jesus to a white image? Right. If he believed the Bible, why would he oppress God's people and tell you you was niggas and nothing? Right. Why? Because he don't believe God's word. Why would he tell you it's okay to eat shrimp, crab, lobster, pork? Why would he tell you that's okay? Because the white man the one told us it's okay to eat whatever. He the one told us that. The Bible don't tell us that. The Bible tell us how to eat. But he the one said, no, man, you can eat whatever you want. Just pray over it. Oh, okay. Well, pray over a, a, a human leg then. That don't make no sense. None of you would pray over a roach and eat it. None of you. But when somebody say, you know you're supposed to eat pork, or you know it's clean if I pray over it, okay, well pray over that dead roach in the corner then. That's right. But you wouldn't do it, because that's disgusting, it's nasty, right? White sister, you wouldn't eat no roach, but do you eat shrimp? You hear me? Yeah, check her down and come back, bro. We need you to hear this, bro. I know you with your grandbaby, but I need you to hear this word, family. So, let me ask you a question. How many of you black people out here would eat roaches? Would you pick a little roach up out the corner and eat it? You know a roach is an arthropod, right? That's the cousin to the shrimp. Right. That's why you, you that's why when you turn over the shrimp, he got legs like a roach. He look like a roach. The shrimp and the roach is first cousin. The spider, the spider and the crab is the first cousins. Crawfish is mud bugs. They get crawfish out of mud. And then black folk take it out of the mud, boil it, and eat it. Come on, man. What happened to us? We're royalty. Royalty is now eating bugs. Royalty is now eating mud bugs. And say, oh, man, it's good, man. Just put a little hot sauce on that thing. Hell no. You're the greatest people off the planet Earth. You're the greatest people God only eat, sister. You're the greatest people God ever created. Young man, you're the greatest people God ever created. You're the Israelite. And Israel means something. This is why they gave you the name. Look at this, sis. Come here. Come here. Look at this young man. Look at this sign. You can read. Watch this. So, they call us African American, right? That ain't in the Bible. The Bible say the tribe of Judah. You know what Judah mean? God's praise. You know what African American mean? Nothing. It has no significance whatsoever. God call you Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Zebulon, Gad. The white man say, nope, African American. West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican. That ain't you. That is not who you are. Give me Genesis 32. Let me say what your name means. You know your name got a meaning, right? Israel got a meaning. That's why they said, look, call them African American because it has no meaning. It has no power. Right? Watch this. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. It is your ancestor, young man. You got an ancestor named Jacob. God changed his name. He said, I'm not going to call you Jacob no more. Read. But Israel. I'm going to call you Israel now. Let's see what Israel means. Read. For as a prince has thou power with God. You hear that? As a prince has thou power with God. That's right. We got power with God. You know how you know we got power with God? Look how high we jump. Look how fast we run. Look how smart we are. Look how beautiful we are. Black don't crack. Black does not crack. When we get in our 60s and 70s, we look like we 40 years old. When the white woman get 50 years old, she's like she a hundred. You know why? Because she not you. She not on your level. They're not on our level. The Bible says, God says, your name means a prince that has power with God. God dwelling in his people. 
but our people don't went astray. Look at us. We don't went astray. Look what we come out here for. We come out here for a Mardi Gras parade. Is this all we worth? Are we better than that? Are we greater than that? To be worshiping something that our oppressors instituted? And you know what? Somebody gonna die in Baton Rouge tonight. So one of our young men gonna die in Baton Rouge tonight. Baton Rouge and Jackson, Mississippi is twin sisters. Y'all the exact same. You go to Jackson, it looks just like this. You come to Baton Rouge, it looks just like Jackson. That's right. There ain't nothing but murder going on. Nothing but hatred going on. Why? Because the children of God don't know who they are. We don't know who we are. Watch this. You know about history? What about you, my brother? You know about history? How did our ancestors get over here? My brother, how did our ancestors get to America? You say, shit. Hold on one second. I got to show you something. I got to show you one thing real quick. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Watch what the Bible say about our people. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. God told the Israelites, the Jews, the chosen people, they were going to go into slavery on ships. Now show me one white man that was on the bottom of a ship with doo doo piled up to the top. Because you know, we ain't had no bathroom. We ain't had no toilet tissue. Wasn't no Charmin on the slave ship. So when you took a dump, it just dropped wherever. When the woman was on her menstrual, she bleeded on everybody else. When she had her kids, she didn't get no epidural. <laughs> they put on her back and say, push, push. Hell no, she just had the baby. And the baby just fell on everybody else with all the, the fluids that come from that. God put that on us because we his chosen people. Y'all God's people, God punished us for disobedience, my brother. God punished us for disobedience. That's why we came on a slave ship, bro. Ain't no Jewish man went through that. That happened to the real Jews. That's you and me. That's right. As our ancestors. You understand that? God trying to tell you, wake up. Come up out of these churches. These churches teaching lies. I don't care who your pastor is. He a liar. Every last right. one of them. And all they do is take your money and oppress you. That's right. Pastor ride real clean through the neighborhood on Mardi Gras Parade. Throw beads. Teach. You understand? But you destroy. You understand that? God said we was going to go into slavery on slave ships, young king. And that happened. Because you got a God in heaven that we pissed off. We made God angry. And that's why God doing what he doing to us. Think about this. All the stuff the white people done did, why they don't get punished like this? That's right. All the, stuff, all the evil stuff the Arabs do to us in our neighborhood, the Chinese, why they ain't never been punished? Why are we the ones that always got to go through something? Why are we the ones always crying? Why our mothers always crying over dead bodies? Why? DJ. None of your pastors got answers for that. None of your, your rappers in Baton Rouge got uh, answers for that. It is what it is. None of them got answers, but we got the answers out the word of God. So the Bible says, what? Read it again. Listen close. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. God said he's going to bring us back into Egypt, but this time on slave ships, mama. We was in Egypt as slaves in the book of Exodus. We built the pyramids. Black folks built pyramids. You understand? We was the one that built the pyramids. Then the Lord said, okay. I'm going to take you out of Egypt, but if you sin against me, I'm going to send you back into Egypt. And God sent us into Egypt, this time on slave ships, young king. That's what happened. Did that happen? That's our, that's our history. New Orleans, Louisiana, Natchez, Mississippi, Jamestown, Virginia. They brought us over here on slave ships. Go ahead. By the way, wherever I speak unto thee, thou shalt sin no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. You hear what the Bible say? When we got off the slave ships, who we sold to? When we got off the slave ships in America, who was we sold to, mama? You say Africans? Who knows? Mama, when we got off the slave ships, Sister Loretta? Okay, sister. When we got off the slave ship, who were we sold to? He go to the side right here. When we got off the ship, what they do? to be sold, 94 prime healthy Negroes. Look, look at that, we got the signs. Look at that right there. When we got out the slave ships, who was we sold to? Who bought us? Come on, come, somebody come set this up for me. I won't come down here with you, look at this. When we got out the slave ships, young brother, who was we sold to? Who was that buying us? White man was buying us. The African sold us to the white man, 100%. Because we ain't African. We God chosen people. So the Bible says that we will be sold to our enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man will be able to redeem us. Read that for them. And no man will. Come on down here with me. 
I want to show them, I want to get up close and personal with our people, because our people need to see that we out here to show love to you. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. God said we be sold to our enemies, because enemies don't hang your brother from a tree for not picking enough cotton. Right. An enemy don't beat you and decapitate you for whistling at a white woman. That's your right. enemies don't do that. I mean, your friends don't do that. Your enemies do that to you. Teacher. That's what the Bible says. We will be sold to our enemies for bond men and bond women. Read. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Ain't nobody been able to redeem us. We still here. That's right. We still here. Say it again. Because we destroyed. That's right. When we got out those slave ships, they, how do we bring that back? By repentance and knowing who we are. First, you got to know who you are to see love in your sister. That's right. To see love in your brother. You got to know, oh, he a king. She's a princess. We equals. We're not, a diff we're not different. We're not separate. We're on the same playing field. Everything you go through is what I go through. All the sorrow pain you feel is the same thing that I feel. You understand? The overall plan, you said the overall plan? Watch this. Ask um, Zephaniah 2 and 1. That's an excellent question. So the sister said, what y'all plan is? Y'all out here preaching, but what's your plan? We're going to show you what it is. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. This is ordained by God too. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Come on. It's the book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Bring it on. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together. Oh nation not desire. We got to gather together. But how are we going to gather together if you Pentecostal, I'm Baptist, he's your own witness, and she Muslim. We can't gather together because our religions conflict one another. The Bible said come together on one accord. Amos 3 and 3. The Bible said we must come together on one accord. You can't be saying, oh, I believe this, and you believe that. We can't never come together. I'll give you an example. Me and you got a business together. I like to sleep with other people's wives, and you like to steal. Well, can't wait. you can't bring your wife around me, because <laughs> I might try to sleep with her. That mess up our business. I can't leave you to count the money at the end of the night, because you might steal it. We got to come together under one banner, and that's God's commandments as the Israelites. That's right. Three. That's the book of Amos, chapter 3. Verse 3, Come on. can two walk together except they be agreed? God said the only way we can truly walk together on one accord is if we agree. But it's too much division amongst black people. All of us believe different things. But guess what? When we came on a slave ship, all we was thinking about is survival. We weren't talking about different religions. It wasn't until they got us here, oppressed us, and then they separated and said, you Jehovah's Witness, you Baptist, and you Presbyterian. Don't talk to her because she don't believe what you believe. And don't talk to him because he don't believe what you believe. But all y'all came on the same ship. You know. That makes no sense. So our plan is to gather God's people. That's why we come to Baton Rouge. That's why we go to Jackson. That's why we got churches all over the world. It's to gather God's elect That's from the right. four corners of the earth. To raise you up and teach you the truth about what God says regarding your condition. Because, watch this, Matthew 15, 24. Here you go. So Jesus Christ, you heard of him, right? What color is he? You say white, okay, now we gotta deal with that. Revelation one and one. All right, but he don't know. So we gotta deal with it. We gotta deal with it from our young king right here. Revelation one and one, come on. That's the picture they gave us. I know, I know sister. But historically, we gotta show the brother the truth. Don't leave yet, watch this. Revelation chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Bring it up, come on. Don't leave yet sis, we got more for you. We got more for you. You asked for the solution, we gonna give it to you. We gonna aid the solution, all right, read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. You got to change, sis. You got to change. You got to change. God said a woman ain't supposed to wear pants. A woman ain't supposed to be out here tight, showing her curves. You sis out here supposed to be dressed modest. You understand? You saw that right there? The Bible said a woman's supposed to dress modest. Women ain't supposed to be out here showing their curves, showing their uh, camel toe, showing their buttocks. That is not what the Bible tells me. The Bible said a woman's supposed to dress modest. That's why y'all end up with niggas and end up uh, by yourself a single parent. Because you show everything to everybody. And all these dudes want to do is run up in you. That's why. You better change. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible said the revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation is to reveal. So John the Revelator about to reveal Jesus Christ to you and me. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Verse 3. Blessed is he that read it. What the Bible say blessed is what? is he that reads you gotta read so these words can seep into your spirit but we don't read now 
All we do is watch documentaries on Netflix and watch cartoons and twerk videos on TikTok. That's all we do. Looking for some type of controversy. But we don't actually pick up the book and read it. That's why nine times out of ten, we ask anybody out here what color Jesus is. They say, oh, he a white man. Oh, a white man lived in the desert? A white man lived in, in uh, ancient Africa? Come on, that don't make no sense. He wasn't white. He's a black man. Read verse 14. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. See that sister right there with the red suit on? Look at her hair. Sis, I'm applauding you right now, sis. You see the hair on her head? That's the same hair Jesus Christ had. Jesus Christ had an afro. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Jesus Christ had white woolly hair, my brother. When you look at this sign, excuse me. You see these signs right here? They gave us this false image of Jesus. Look at this. They told you Jesus Christ was a stringy-haired, blue-eyed, white man. That ain't biblical. The Bible said Jesus had hair like wool. Touch your hair. That's wool right there. You can dread it up. You can uh, you can braid it up. You can let it fall flat. You can put it in an afro. You can cut it low and have some spinning break, uh, spinning all ways. You can do everything with your hair. But yet they told you that this man right here is in the image of God. You see that, my brother? My brother right here in the, uh, what is that, teal shirt? Look at this. You see what they gave us, bro? They gave us a white image of Jesus and forced us to believe. Murdered us and slaughtered us. You said what now? Dad, you right, that ain't real. That's a man named Cedric Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Rodrigo Borgia. The Bible said what? Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Show me, bro. <laughs> On the sign. Who got white woolly hair? That one right there. You in the spirit. Come on. That's white as snow. That's white as snow. Come on. And his eyes was a flame of fire. Between these two images, which one of them got redness in their eyes? Uh-oh. There we go again. Strike two against this demon. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So the Bible says his feet was like fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now, if your feet black, what's the rest of your guy going to be covered? If your feet are black or brown, whatever, what's going to be the color of the rest of your body? The same color, right? Some people's feet may be lighter because they don't get as much exposure to the sun, but it's still the same color. It's a brown or black color, right? Jesus Christ's feet was like fine brass as if they burned in the furnace. So what color that mean Jesus was? He's a black man. So who lied to you and told you this? White supremacy. They showed you on television, they showed you in movies, they showed you on pictures, they showed you in Bibles. Some of your grandmamas got pictures of white Jesus in their house. But that ain't the biblical depiction of Christ. That's right. Why do you think low self-esteem? Why do you think our sisters got low self-esteem out here? That's right. Why do you think black women put blonde and green and purple in their hair? She already naturally beautiful the way she is. Why she got to change her natural beauty to something else? Because we think Jesus is a white man. And that mess with our subconscious mind. But if all you black men out here knew that Jesus Christ was a black man, you would not be killing your brother in these streets. That's right. You would not be harming your brother in these streets. You would not be raping your sisters because you would know she looked like Jesus. That's right. That's why they disconnected us from our heritage. That's why they destroyed our image in our mind to keep us docile and weak and hating for one another. But it's a new day. God raised up the men of God to teach you the truth. That's right. Right? Watch this. Give me Job 30-30. Watch this, bro. Read. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Watch this. It's the book of Job. Chapter 30, verse 30. Hey, ask my brother real quick. Stand right here, my brother. What color is the prophet Job in the Bible? What color? What color was his skin? Because we showing the young man, Jesus, a black man, according to the Bible. The prophet Job. You heard of Job? What color is it? Just off what your first thought is. You say black to our first thought? All right, read. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. You hear what Job said? Job said, my skin black. Now, why do white men give us white pictures of Job? King Solomon, what color is he? It, what, what color do you think King Solomon is? You say what? You say white. What about you? What color? You, you say black. All right, watch this. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. But comely. What King Solomon said about himself? King Solomon said, I'm black and beautiful. Because comely means beautiful. So why in the world would we have black women out here trying to bleach their skin? 
brother's like Sammy Sosa trying to bleach their skin. Sister's like Lil' Kim trying to bleach her skin. When Jesus Christ was black, and so was King Solomon. That's right. Not only was he black, let's see what kind of hair he had. Give him a song of Solomon 5 and 11. Let's see what kind of hair King Solomon had. That's Watch this. Right. So Uncle Solomon chapter 5, verse 11. Bring it on. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of hair say he had? Read it again. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy. You hear this? King Solomon was a black man, beautiful, and had dreadlocks. That's right. But they didn't get you white pictures in all your churches and your grandmama didn't believe. The Bible said the greatest man on the planet Earth is black men That's and right. black women. That's right. But you have not been taught the truth, bro. Right. That's why we killing each other in Baton Rouge right now. Come on, see loving one another. Many of our brothers and sisters out here, they don't really love one another. We use each other for what? What we can get from each other. That's but right. the Bible said we the greatest people on the planet Earth ever walked this Earth. Your sons, your daughters, and your kids. Your brothers and your sisters. The greatest people on Earth. And now we pack ourselves out for a Mardi Gras parade. Where Mardi Gras is evil as hell. You do realize that, right? It's the descendant of Bacchus. That's an evil custom. How does God say we're supposed to do? How does God say we're supposed to deal with evil customs? What do you think? Okay, 1 Corinthians 10 21. Excellent. See, you, hey, I like brothers like you because you honest. You're like, so I don't know. Just tell me. You know what I'm saying? That's real. If a lot of people out here think they know something, don't know a damn thing. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers at the Lord's table and of the table and of the table of the devils. You, hear that? you can't be with Christ. And say you're gonna keep God's commandments and you love Jesus Christ. And then at the same time you celebrate Mardi Gras festivals. Mardi Gras parade. That's of the devil. That's a Bacchus. That's the Greek god of wine. They don't teach you that. You just come out here and get beads, and people uh, come out here and eat, and they throw beads at you, you be like, oh man, this is a real good time. Look how they got our daughters dressing. Look how they got our daughters dancing. Look, these are young princesses, they ain't supposed to be dressing and dancing like that. None of our daughters is supposed to be doing that. But guess what? They have to do it and they have everybody say, oh, look at that, that's cute, that ain't cute. Because the Bible says this, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Bring it up. Look, got our young daughters twerking and they wonder why they're pregnant at 16. You understand what I'm saying? Why they're pregnant at 18. Soon they get out of high school, they already got a baby. You're like, damn, what happened? Wait, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Look at our daughters. Are they dressed modest? If I can see the curve in your body, is that modest? No, that's not modest. Look at our grown women. Some of our grown women out here got a little bit of booty shorts on. They grown, five kids, 40 years old, booty shorts. That's not modest. God said our daughters, our women, is going to be dressing modestly. You understand? The Bible also tells us we got to look over our daughter. Watch that. Give me some 26 now. Watch this. I'm just dealing with the, sin, with the sin of how people let their daughters dress out here at 22. Bring it up. You know there's pedophiles out here that's looking at little girls. Some of these wicked Negroes around here right now looking at these 9-year-olds, 10-year-olds. And then the black woman sent her son out here, or her daughter out here, to dance and twerk. Jeez. That made no sense. Wait. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 9, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, Keep her in straightly. You know what the Bible say? If your daughter be shameless. You know what it mean for a daughter be shameless? It means she don't care. She'll just bust it open. She'll show it to whoever. She's shameless. She don't give a damn. She ain't got no shame. God said if your daughter be shameless, do what? Keep her in straightly. Keep her ass at the house. That's what that mean. Keep her at home. Don't let her come out here and dress like that. Look, our people out here getting Mardi Gras bees. You know tomorrow we're going to be oppressed again, right? My brother, you know tomorrow we're going to be oppressed again. Tomorrow, Monday morning, back to reality. Bills, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to watch your son, but you nobody to watch you. You're trying to die, so you make sure you don't go to jail. Yeah. Right back in hell. So what this dude is This is a waste of time. It don't do nothing for us. It ain't for no help at all. Why you think they got them sides? You see the mask on there? Where you think the Mardi Gras mask come from? Where you think that come from? What do you think that symbolize? Yeah. What do you say? Greece. Greece before Rome. And then Rome carried it out. 
And that's what our people doing. We following the ways of the man. Give me that Proverbs 331. Watch this. Proverbs 331. Watch this. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. The Bible says, don't envy the oppressor, and don't choose none of his ways. That's what we do with Mardi Gras. That's the ways of our oppressor. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.